Now at 10, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. It has happened again. A routine traffic stop by a Connecticut cop ends in violence and bloodshed. Thanks for joining us for the News at 10. I'm Brent Harden. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. A Woodbury police officer was wounded all while just doing his job. Uh, police say a driver stabbed him. Fox 61's Alexa Farrell is live in Woodbury now with the latest on this. Alexa. Sarah and Brent, we just got new information in from Connecticut State Police, including the name of the suspect and the charges. Being charged and being held on a $3 million bond currently is Tyler Wilmot, and he's being charged with failure to display a registration plate, as well as operating a vehicle without a proper license, assault, and commit to attempt, uh, attempt to commit murder. Now, the real hero of the day was Matthew Costello, Sergeant Matthew Costello, who actually was able to tase Wilmot, get him to the ground and get him in handcuffs, as well as take the injured officer, Tim Wright, to the hospital in his own police cruiser. The situation unfolded very, very quickly. Just before 1 o'clock Thursday afternoon, state police say Woodbury police officer Tim Wright made a traffic stop on North Main Street, but that traffic stop turned dangerous quickly. The individual that had been pulled over got out of his car and police say he started to attack Officer Wright before pulling a knife and stabbing him in the neck. Police say that's when Officer Wright hit the alert call button for backup and another officer was able to taser and capture the suspect who started to run away. A sergeant from the state police Troop L put Officer Wright in his police cruiser and rushed him to Waterbury Hospital. We have to take care of our own when we're doing the shop. The suspect is now being held at Troop L in Litchfield. No call is routine whatsoever. So it, it does not matter even if it's a, a minor traffic violation that we observe. We still have a, a heightened sense of awareness when we're approaching that as well as a sense of caution in how we deal with it. For Chris Ryan and his wife Rebecca, it was a shocking afternoon in their neighborhood. Yeah, it's scary. You know, you think you live in this quiet little country town and then all of a sudden something like this happens and, you know, it's somebody who lives literally across the street from you, so it's pretty shocking. Ryan says he was surprised to come home to multiple police cars in front of his home on North Main Street where the incident unfolded. And you just wonder, you know, how, how this could actually happen and what's wrong with him to think that, oh, that's just something I could do. Police have released minimal information on the suspect, but they do say he's most likely known to police. We walk around Main Street all the time. They said he did as well. So yeah. to me, that's frightening. That's just a testament to what's going on in the world today. And Connecticut State Police do say that Officer Tim Wright's body camera was on and that that footage will be released pending the investigation. In Woodbury, Alexa Farrell, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Alexa, thank you. Well, dock workers who have been walking picket lines for three days and nights have reached a tentative agreement tonight. So the port strike is over and workers are getting a huge raise. Connor Hansen is covering this breaking story for us at a port in New York City where container ships have been waiting offshore for a settlement to be reached. Let's go, we did it! Around 45,000 striking dock workers will be heading back to work Friday. It comes after the union representing longshoremen reached a tentative agreement with port operators late Thursday. We're very happy with the outcome. The tentative deal is centered around wages, a 62% increase, though that has not been confirmed by either party. Workers say that bump in pay would likely come over several years. We're not getting that off the bat. What people don't understand is we really don't make too much money. Uh, we're towards the bottom of the pole uh, as far as unions are concerned. Um, we make a lot of our money on overtime. There's been no word on the use of automation, one of the union's biggest concerns. You know, we're not greedy. We just want to protect our jobs so that we can provide for our families. The deal comes after three days of striking at 36 ports from Maine to Texas that handle roughly half the nation's cargo from ships. In a statement, President Biden applauded both parties for negotiating, saying in part, quote, collective bargaining works and it is critical to building a stronger economy. And when asked on camera, he had this to say. Dock workers are going back to work and uh, they got the next 90 days we're going to settle everything, number one. Good news there. That was Connor Hansen reporting.
All right, now to our first look at the weather, and we've got our eyes on the weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, before we make plans, though, we got to find out what we're looking at. Here's Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank with a first look at the forecast. Rachel. Hi, yeah, we get 70s that continue into the day tomorrow and Saturday as well. There is a chance for a spot shower heading into Saturday morning, but by midday and afternoon, we are dry, and the rest of the weekend, we are home free with lots of sunshine, but get ready for some cooler temperatures temperatures next week. Right now we're looking at 50s to right around 60 degrees. Taking a look at the satellite, there's nothing going on here close to home, but you can see the cold front that will eventually pass through here early on Saturday that could bring us a shower or two. Otherwise, heading through the evening tonight, no weather issues. We'll see temperatures falling back into the 50s as we head towards daybreak. A nice, comfortable morning out there. By lunchtime, we're near 70 and high temperatures will climb into the lower to middle 70s as we head through the afternoon. I do think we see more clouds out there tomorrow compared to today, but we do stay dry right through Friday night if you have any plans. And then on Saturday, again, chance for a shower in spots in the morning, especially around daybreak, 7, 8 a.m. After that, we should be in the process of drying out and clouds will break for some sunshine as we head through the middle of the day and into the afternoon. I think Saturday is the warmer of the two weekend days. We lose maybe a handful of degrees heading into Sunday, but we'll see lots of sunshine and temperatures still right around average for this time of year. But Sunday is the beginning of a cooler stretch of weather. Almost every day next week is a few degrees cooler than the day before it. We're going to talk about it. Your full forecast coming up in just a bit, guys. Thank you, Rachel. Well, new tonight, a six-year-old boy is recovering at Connecticut Children's. We're told he was hit by a school bus. The boy was struck by that bus late this afternoon on Garden Hill Circle in Waterbury. We don't have many details as of this hour. All we know is he was seriously injured. After the crash, the boy was rushed to St. Mary's Hospital, but because of the severity of those injuries, he was transferred to CCMC in Hartford. Waterbury police are investigating, and no charges have been filed as of our last update. Yeah. Yet another case of a threat targeting a school here in Connecticut to tell you about tonight. This time it was in Middletown. Police are investigating what they call a swatting incident aimed at disrupting classes at Middletown High. They got a call yesterday that someone was threatening the safety of those inside and everyone went into lockdown. Fortunately, it all turned out to be yet another hoax and the incident is under investigation tonight. Detectives in Hartford are investigating a homicide. This happened early this afternoon on Florence Street. 30 year old Chavoya Rivers of Manchester was shot. He died at the hospital. Investigators believe the gunman and Rivers were fighting. Domestic Violence Awareness Month is underway and communities across Connecticut are working to mourn victims and support survivors. An important cause here. Fox 61's Kaylee Collins takes us to Torrington where dozens of people gathered for a candlelit vigil. Each year in October, the Susan B. Anthony Project holds this vigil in honor of anyone impacted by domestic violence and also to remember all the victims. It was a solemn yet supportive night Thursday at Co Park in Torrington, where victims of domestic violence were remembered. Long live Sophie Grace. And survivors celebrated. Domestic violence is very real and it's here and we need to do something about it. The annual candlelight vigil hosted by the Susan B. Anthony Project serves both as a space to memorialize victims. Um, there was an incident back in Burlington in 2023. A close friend lost her life to her boyfriend, domestic violence. I think it was a great thing doing this. I think we should remember her in many ways. She was a great person. Shouldn't just be forgotten. And to shed light on work being done to prevent deadly domestic violence incidents. Because if we can teach people how to resolve their conflicts, how to, you know, stop bullying, how to set healthy boundaries, how to, you know, accept and love other people despite whatever diversity that they may have, then we're going to be a much safer community overall. Here in Connecticut, 26 people lost their lives due to domestic violence last year. It's not something that happens just here or just there or not in our community. It's in your community whether you realize it or not. We have resources for anyone impacted by domestic violence available at fox61.com. Those gathered here encourage anyone who's experiencing violence at the hands of an intimate partner to not hesitate to seek help. Reporting in Torrington, Kaylee Collins, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station.
All right, Kaylee, thank you. And here are some of those resources. You can call either one of the phone numbers on your screen to reach the National Domestic Violence Hotline or the CT Safe Connect Hotline. Each of their websites is also up on your screen. They are both available 24 hours a day, seven days a week for anyone who might need them. We have a Fox 61 follow-up now. A Bristol school principal is accused of changing students' answers on standardized tests, even allegedly going as far as to fill in answers for students who were absent. A state commission investigation looked into Emily Gomes, principal at Ivy Drive Elementary. The report claims Gomes manipulated the answers of at least a dozen students on the English language arts exam she proctored in May. There are also questions about the validity of answers by up to eight other students. Gomes told investigators she left her laptop unattended and thinks someone hacked into her account, but they're not buying it. Gomes hasn't responded to reporters' requests for comments. Might seem a little early to talk taxes here, but there is good news for Connecticut residents tonight. The IRS is expanding its program to allow taxpayers to file directly with the agency for free. Connecticut will be one of 24 states to be added to the direct file program. That means taxpayers can do their taxes and submit their returns right to the government without using or paying for third-party software, something like TurboTax. The IRS commissioner says there's been success in states already enrolled in the program.